Welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. And I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And first off, I want to do a little bit of our own personal advertising. We got a new Drunk Batman episode up right now. Drunk Batman episode 2. Well, we call it Drunk Batman and Robin. The the animated series. So check that out. It's nice and short, animated and funny. You'll like it. Secondly, I want you to go by and check out the oldmanorange.com website. From there, you can check out all our pages. YouTube, Facebook, Podomatic. Download our podcast on iTunes as well. Give us a rating, give us a share. Whatever you like, comment and like. Okay, one more thing I want to shout out there. Ryan Dunnigan's got his comic book on our webpage. It's called Grit. It's about a monkey who kills. And he wears a gas mask. And Ryan, you can explain the rest. I won't go into too much detail because I'm only in the first issue right now. Well, the first issue's out. I'm currently working on the second issue. Uh, short and simple of it is it's a revenge spree starring a girl who a girl who fell behind in college tuition and a monkey with a gas mask with a revenge on a revenge scheme. It's a, it's kind of a dark comedy. It's primarily first and foremost action with a dash of science fiction. The monkey's going. The monkey's name is Grit name of the comic easy to remember uh and he's kind of going off a hit list of this organization that he was somewhat of a test subject for so yeah i won't say more than that that's the first issue just goes into the bare bones of just introducing the two main characters primarily scarlet the the girl uh grit comes in later in it so second issue is currently working uh first five pages should be up sometime within the month so yeah, if you get a chance, check it out. That's on oldmanorange.com, and there's also a Facebook page to it. There's a link on oldmanorange.com, and you can find that at www.facebook.com backslash grit comic book series. Mm, so so make sure you check that out. So I'm done whoring out like the dirty slut I am. Yes, and you can check out Ryan's fabulous artwork on the grit comic book series. Same artwork that appears in the Drunk Batman animated series. Thank you very much. So, today we're going to do a double whammy feature. We're going to do a DVD and a feature film. Two things that came out in this week that were pretty badass, I'd have to say. I agree with you right there. So, what do you want to talk about first? We're either going to talk about the Dark Knight Returns animated series part one, or we're going to talk about the feature film Looper. Since we just got done watching Dark Knight Returns, what do we talk about? Actually, let's talk about Looper, because I know that you and me were such Batman fans, we're going to go on a Batman tangent Yo, for a long that, time. That's so. what I was thinking, too. The Batman thing would lead Looper. into other Batman things, so let's get Looper... Not, 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 let's, not, let's get it out of the way, but let's get it out of the way, actually. I don't know how else to say <laughs> that. Bitch slap out of the way so we get to Batman quicker. No, it's actually... Looper was a pretty good movie. I really enjoyed it. No, I, I, I thought Looper was pretty darn cool... All the way up to about the very end. That's it was one of those movies I really was into it. I thought it was fantastic. This is what I have to say though. Really, what Looper is, it's reverse Terminator. That's really what it that, is. That's my point. And the fucking chicken that movie's named Sarah. <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> <laughs> but that's really what it is. It's Bruce Willis is pretty much like the Terminator who sent back in time. Probably an homage to it. To kill this pretty much John Carter kid, but instead of this John Carter kid being like a savior, this John Carter kid's an evil person who apparently destroys all the good shit in the future, which includes Bruce Willis and his hot Asian wife. (laughs) Well, the thing is about that movie is they advertise it as, if you haven't seen the trailer, Joseph Gordon-Lovett, who looks fucking nothing like Bruce Willis, but in the movie, before I jump onto that, they actually did a good job of, uh, actually, I'll just tell the main story, then we'll get back on that. Joseph Gordon-Lovett, He's uh, it takes place in 2044 in Kansas, which I thought was pretty cool for a sci-fi film. It's always like in L.A. or New York. It's never in like some like Midwest uh, state or anything like that. Yeah, unless it's uh, Star Trek. Yeah, but that's only for a bit anyway. Yeah, a tiny bit. And what happens is uh, there's no uh, time travel at this point, but the people in the future send uh, targets back because apparently it's impossible to kill anybody. Because, like, forensics and whatnot so good. So they send them back. They take care of them. They kill them. They get rid of the trace. But the thing is, the second... Yes, you have You should have mentioned the mob sent them back. The mob sent them back. Thank apparently, you. apparently the mob is the only people that's got time travel in the future. Yeah. That's what we're told. I guess the government can't use it. <laughs> they, they didn't really explain that, but I was thinking about that throughout the whole movie. It's just like, yeah. oh, well. They just go with it. it. It's future. It's future stuff, yeah. But no, they don't need to go in every little detail. I know some people will want that, but I liked how it just cut to the point. It was very a very simple story, but a really good story. Um, so as it progresses, we find out that uh, what happens is eventually 
the the the, the assassin the assassins Joseph Gordon Lovett and his kind uh, they're called loopers and they become loose ends. So the second they become a looper, they agree they have to kill themselves at some point. That's when their contract is up. So they are well aware of that they get paid, and they they their their the, the, their uh, future self gets sent back, and they have to kill themselves. The way they know it, because they always send them back with a bag, uh, and they always have their payment strapped to their back. So when he kills them, and they have a, they always get paid in silver. When they have gold on their back, that's them. So that's uh, and then what happens is. Uh, Bruce Willis, who's Joseph Gordon Lovett from the future, comes in and he gets away. He's saying, "Listen, I uh, I got away. You don't have to kill me. More shit. It happens. This. There, I, I can fix everything. You just got to let me do what I got to do." And I've been talking for a while, so why don't you just? Well, that's the part where like I, th- Joseph Gordon Lovett kind of like, comes off as kind of a, a moron in this movie. Um, that's Bruce like, Willis reminds him consistently. Well, it's just one of those ones like, okay. If there's anybody out there in the fucking world that you're going to believe that comes back in time to tell you shit, you think you would believe it from your own fucking self. But Joseph Gordon Lovett's like, no, whatever. So you get some hot Asian chick? I'll make sure you don't. And it's like, <laughs> it's your fucking self you're talking to. Like, what the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> He's like, yeah, right. Like, myself would, te- would like tell me something like that. Myself would lie to me, probably. <laughs> and that was the only thing I thought. Joseph Gordon Lovett was kind of retarded throughout the movie. I mean, like, at first I kind of put up with it. It was like, whatever, but... They were doing a lot of, like... He was, like... They got a point, the point across that he was a drug addict. Yeah, he was a drug addict. But still, I just I just feel like... It's not like some random person came back and said, like, you gotta believe me. It was your fucking self. <laughs> well, here's one... I just want to say this. I don't want to get up too much off the point. Didn't the drugs they were taking... Because all the drugs they took were through the eyes. Implied. Didn't that remind you of Cowboy Bebop, the first episode? How yeah. the guy always, like, taking shots That's in the, the eye. eye? Yeah. No, I, I was thinking that, too. But one thing I thought was really cool, I just want to mention about the technology in the future. I like how it's, like, it's futuristic, but it's only, like, it has a real realistic feeling. And then it's, like, people's cars, it's almost the same cars they use nowadays. But just people just keep, like, upgrading and modifying them. So mm-hmm. they had, like, these, either they had solar panels strapped onto them, or I think they had some other kind of gas chambers that were plugged in. Yeah, they had, like, a little, like, pipe thing that went along the side of the car into the gas tank, into the hood. Yeah. And then some of them had solar panels on it. But I just thought that was kind of cool. It was, it was more, like... Almost people were living in a, uh, a time period where people just reuse the same things mm-hmm. over and over again instead of that, like, you know, you have it for five years and you trade it in. You have it for five years and you trade it in. Joseph Gordon Lovett, his character, uh, Joe, I believe is his name. Joe's rich because, you know, he's a looper. But they get across the majority in the city are pretty poor. I mean, like, not just like, oh, it's kind of poor. Like, they have, like, districts, like little shanties where there's, like, tents everywhere. You see, like, people just, like, stealing shit left and right. You see, like, a 15-year-old kid get blown away with a shotgun for stealing something. <laughs> yeah, that was funny. Uh, so, and also, it's like, they also mentioned, too, that there's, like, a hobo problem in the movie, too. At one yeah. period, but, like, a couple years prior or something like that. That hobos, like, hobos is the biggest problem, and they're always stealing and killing shit. So they went, like, on a rampage and killed a lot of them. Yeah. It's all a backstab story, though. Mm-hmm. They, don't, they, don't, they don't beat it over the head. They just briefly mention it. And then, and they also show it a little bit, because they're, um, actually... The guy from There Will Be Blood, the guy who gets beat to death with the with the bowling pins in the movie. Did you know that? Was that the guy who played the, the, the revolver g- ocelot like wannabe guy? No, no, no. That was the that was his friend Seth, who was all like, oh, "You gotta help you me, gotta man! Help me. Well, I don't know what to do. Daniel Day Lewis is chasing me with a bowling pin." <laughs> For some reason, he talks like PJ from the Goof Troop. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Well, one thing I liked about this movie, this is one of the things I thought was a real good thing in a movie, because you don't see this in modern movies. In modern movies, they've kind of cut back on this, as there was really good, like, characters in it. Mm-hmm. Like, I loved how, like, each person kind of felt like a certain character. Like, there's this character, I, I looked at him as, like, the revolver ocelot wannabe, and he carried around, you know, a six-shooter the whole time, and he had the bullet strapped around him, and he really wanted to make himself feel like he was a cowboy in, like, the modern day. And I thought that was just really cool. And then even in the future... When Bruce Willis's character gets taken away, everybody's dressed up. They're all three of the guys they're are dressed like Amish. Undertakers. <laughs> oh, they're, they're dressed like Undertakers. Okay, I thought, I thought they looked more like Amish people, but okay. And think of Undertakers. Yeah, like I mean, like you know, like yeah, I know what you meant. Yeah, the guys that work at the grave. I don't, I don't know Undertaker is. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to make sure I explain this to you. So you know, yeah, just... they all dress like the wrestler. <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> well, pretty much same thing. That's why he dresses. But um, I just thought that was really cool that, and even like just the small things about um joseph gordon lovett's character like the way he dressed is he dressed kind of like a 1950s guy like almost mm-hmm. like he was like sort of a cop sort of he, he kind of had that like he's wearing a tie and ties were out of fashion at that time he tucked in his shirt 
and it, it looked okay. Once again, tucking your shirt looks fine in movies. Does not look fine in real life. I just want to get that across. It looked okay because he had a leather jacket over it. If it yeah. was not, if he didn't have the leather jacket, it would just look fucking stupid. But the fact that you know, I don't know what it is, but tucking a shirt like you can watch a movie and you see Patrick Swayze, he's got a shirt tucked, and you're like, that looks great. You go to try to do that in your own house, you look like a fucking <laughs> dork or a moron. You have to be like. I think, like, 70 to pull it off and have it look okay. Well, you know, when you're 70, it just makes you look really old and, like, you almost like you don't know how to dress yourself anymore. <laughs> I was just get done hanging out with Abraham and Phyllis. <laughs> yeah. But no, um, I thought the movie was pretty good. They, uh, there's actually a whole other side story. Not even side story. This is actually the driving force of the story. The movie strictly advertised it's like <laughs> Joseph Gordon-Lovett because what happens is Bruce Willis, which is Joseph Gordon-Lovett from the future, gets away and he has to track him down Joseph and stop Willis. him. Willis. Joseph Willis or Bruce Lovett, yeah. Uh, he has to he has to go track him down, and that's only that's really just a small part of the story. That's primarily Joseph Gordon Lovett's like that's his motivation, but it's really well, the that's st- really what they advertise in the trailer actually. Yeah, that? that's what they advertise in the trailer, and that's that's his motivation in the movie. But the real story is there's the guy who runs everything called the Rainmaker, and what he is is he's the guy who runs the loopers. He's apparently no, that's not the Rainmaker. He's the guy that runs the loopers and runs all the different crime syndicates. In the future or in, in the, the present? Future. The oh, future. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought you were about the guy at the present. Oh, no, not that guy. That, that, that guy was a good character, too. We'll talk yeah, about him perfect, in a second. Per, another example of really well-made characters. I just like... I don't know that actor's name, but he reminded me of Jeff Bridges. No, he was uh, he was a guy who's just like Jeff Bridges. What's his name? God, I saw I saw his name in the credits, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's who it is. But he's one of those kind of guys, he's kind of in that same category. Like, anything that Jeff Bridges could play, this guy could play, too. Oh, okay. But I can't remember what that guy's name is. We'll come back. Another really big actor, though. That guy was good, though. Um, anyway, what happens is Bruce Willis, and this I think is Jeff what it, Daniels. Okay. No. Oh, that that sounds familiar. Is that no? Is that right? Yeah. I don't know. We'll continue on. We'll move on. There's the um, the movie almost tries to bring in kind of like a morality kind of concept, like is this right? Is this wrong? Type of thing. Because Bruce Willis is going down. He only has a smidgen bit of information on the uh, on the Rainmaker. Nobody knows anything about it. It's him. really just like the Terminator because there's a, there's Literally three people he has, and it's one out of those three, just like in Terminator One. Mm-hmm. And he's going down, and he he's tracking kids that we at this at this point, and they're like they'd be like five or something. Mm-hmm. He's tracking down these kids, and he's killing them. And they actually get a point across that he just feels horrible about it. There, he only he only manages to kill one of the kids, but there's a part they don't show it. I mean, they cut away. Just they cut away. Sad, but other than that, though, it was pretty funny still. <laughs> I like how you're like the only person. I mean, I was laughing. I was, I was kind of like one of those things. I'm not one of those people. I'm offended, but I understood like this would be like the emotionally heavy scene of the movie. Just, me, and I, I was just sitting there. I was laughing because as soon as I saw it, Bruce Willis walk into a garden with this little kid <laughs> standing there. I'm just like, Spencer's gonna fucking laugh. Like, <laughs> then I start well, laughing. To me, it's a couple just, old I, I, people I, I like sitting in front. Of Bruce cool. Willis it makes me laugh. I think that's what makes me laugh. It was just like a regular person. It's not nearly as funny, but like you see Bruce Willis <laughs> do it, it makes it funnier. One of the toughest movie, like movie action stars ever. It's like I'm gonna go kill, kill some it. fucking kids. <laughs> fucking the kid jumps on him, breaks the gun out of his hand, just starts beating the shit out of Bruce Willis. <laughs> I'm a fucking rainmaker, bitch. <laughs> so what ends up happening is, and then like he he kills a kid, and you see he just feels horrible about it. They're playing this heavy music. It's not like a run and gun action movie. The movie's not jam packed with action. The action in the movie is sick, but it's not. It's one of those ones when there's action, it's really cool, but there's not always. Yeah, and um. From there, like, what was I gonna say? We find out that Joseph Gordon Lovett's it, like waiting. At, he 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 managed to find some. He he got a piece of the map that Bruce Willis has, and he's waiting at one of the spots for Bruce Willis to show up because this the kid lives there, and this is the actually the kid. And earlier in the movie, they just throw it out there like you're gonna forget, but I knew at some point it's gonna come back up. They get across that there is there is some kind of mutation to make pe- the gay people telekinetic powers. Now, usually it only involves like lifting quarters or lighters, just something small like, like that. They just something they just very quickly brush over, but you know it's going to come back around. Well, then they imply later on in the story that in the future, the Rainmaker guy he took out like the entire organization single handedly, and that mm-hmm. was the part where was like he did single handedly. So yeah, so that but that was right where I was like, well, telekinesis single handedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The X Men. Exactly. I, I, fi- I figured it, it went together pretty straightforward there. <laughs> And then, uh, and then, like you know, uh, he stays at this farmhouse, which is Emily Blunt, who sort of has a past. Mm-hmm. And they get across that her kid, which what was the kid's name? I forgot the kid's name. I, I remember the girl's name, but I don't remember the kid's name. His name was, was the girl's name was Sarah. Her name was like, like a little nod like, to Terminator. Michael or no, something like that or Steve or 
Sid. His name was Sid. Sid, yeah, which is like, yeah. oh, I'm Sid. <laughs> well, actually, I thought the kid that played him actually was very good. No, was that really was young. a really good child actor, I would have to say. Yeah. And the thing is, the kid's really smart. The kid's really witty. He does little, makes little inventions out of his toys. And he's like fucking six years old. Yeah, like five or six. I mean, like, like literally six years old, not like, you know, we got... No, you got a ten-year-old kid, kid playing <laughs> like a six-year-old, <laughs> playing with mega blocks and shit. And what ends up happening is they they get they um, it's almost kind of like Akira from this point because this is the plot line they took out. They this kid is it, this movie it, not enough to make it a horror film, but it really has some horror film elements to it. And it like is the part when Bruce Willis kills the kid. He's kind of haunted by it and he falls asleep for a second. The part that actually kind of made me jump a little bit. You see a child's hand, come, like he's trying to sleep. A child's hand comes across his face, and he snaps up, snaps out of it. The kid is actually genuinely fucking freaky in some parts. There's the parts where he's yelling at his mom. He's like, Mom! Just his eyes and the whole room. <laughs> I was laughing so hard. They I was laughing, so funny. That, that, was, that was funny. It was a little freaky. just Because you knew it was something. You knew it was the telekinetic powers by that point. He wasn't lifting shit, but you just knew. Oh, my God, that's probably telekinetic. And then just whenever something bad would happen, this kid would just freak out. So... They got the point that so it really, this movie had some horror elements to it. Another part this kind of goes back to more of the beginning of the movie, but uh, Seth, the guy who gets beamed death at the bowling pin and um, in uh, there will be blood, his character uh, he lets his lo- he lets uh, his loose end get away. He lets his future self get away. So what is they they manage to get a hold of him. They manage to get a hold of Seth, and then as you see as his future self running away, like you notice he suddenly doesn't have a finger. He's like, what the fuck? He keeps on going. He suddenly notices he doesn't have another finger. His nose is gone. He trips and falls. He doesn't have a leg. And it just, it's like, oh, that's actually kind of trippy. I never even thought that was pretty creepy. No, it's pretty cool because then he finally gets to the place he's supposed to be and he opens the fucking, and the door opens and it's, and then you see the, like, um, his past self just being chopped up to bits. Yeah. Or like just laying there all mangled up. And mm-hmm. I just thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. So it was, this movie has a lot of very interesting ideas. And, well, it's not ideas. Just, it's interesting in general. It's really good. Um, now we're going to get to the ending, which didn't bother me, but it bothered you. I mean, I see your point, but I'm oh, just, I don't know. Cause the, 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 what happens in the ending here, well, we should actually lead up, tell about Bruce Willis's side of the story first. Actually. Okay. Well, perfect example is Bruce Willis is he's the Terminator. He's sent back in time and he's trying to kill these kids just so he can save his future. And in his future life, what happens is there's a, he meets an Asian woman and a Chinese, I'm assuming, cause he goes to Shanghai and I don't assume he traveled any farther after that. But, um, and this woman apparently changes his life all around. It makes him stop doing drugs, stop doing crime. Because for the last 30 years, he, Joseph Gorlutton, I guess, moves to Shanghai. And he spends like 25 years doing crime over there. And he's not, he, he's not a looper anymore. Now he's just working as like a, a mobster kind of, I guess. Because he would happen as he, he does it like in a, it doesn't like a montage. So. He w- he went there and he's like, I got a lot of money. But then he just ended up like wasting all of his money on hookers and uh drugs that he ends up getting falling into debt and he's like i need some more fucking money so so he starts doing that but this this asian woman's what saves him and you know turns him into a peaceful man a man who doesn't need crime and he lives a fantastic life until the undertakers come and fuck shit up and so the rainmaker comes and he kills his wife so he goes she sends himself back in time not the rainmaker himself but the people the people of the rainmaker Mm -hmm. so he goes and sends himself back in time so he can kill the rainmaker and save the future. It's really just like reverse Terminator. Mm-hmm. So, um, in my personal opinion, Bruce Willis goes through all this, and he goes and back to the future self. I mean, he tries to talk to his his past self, who's a fucking moron, you know, and tries to like do like, dude, we can fucking fix this out if we work together. And Jessica Lund's like, no, I'm a dick. So he goes up and does this all by himself. He even kills all the mobsters, the the all the looper, or like, with the exception of Revolver, Revolver Ocelot. Who's, yeah, except for that guy. His but, name was Kid Blue. That's his character's name but he kills all the all the people who are in charge of the loopers in the past so that pretty much Joseph Gore loves totally free does all this work for him fuck himself and then the very end Joseph Gore love ends up killing himself and kills Bruce Willis just so that fucking kid can live well they, the, all right this here's the thing I understand what you're saying and I think that's a good argument it doesn't bother me because what they get what they get across is I see the look you're giving me <laughs> <laughs> fucking done again in his feelings for little children of <laughs> telekinesis powers. No, well, no. The thing with that is they get the point across that people can change. Because what happens is they get uh, 
everybody pretty much it's just down to Bruce Willis and Joseph Gordon Lovett by this point and Emily Blunt's character and the kids running off. And Joseph Gordon Lovett says earlier in the movie that his mom sells him to some uh, to a low level gang for some drugs and then he escaped and he got involved in crime and so on and so forth. Now what happens is he actually sees like this has happened before and he see is he's uh cause he sees like Bruce he sees like Bruce Willis killing Emily Blunt, which I was tr- excited about because I really didn't like that girl either. She was obnoxious. <laughs> Kill, killing Emily Blunt to get killed to kill the kid in order to like you know save his wife, and then he sees like the kid just getting onto a train. He's like and, pissed. He's like, I'm angry. I'm well, gonna he just saw the world. Mom. He just saw his mom. Well, he, he just killed his was, own. He killed his, his like mom's sister earlier. He on. couldn't. He, he couldn't tell. He he didn't mean to. It was one of those things. He couldn't Still, control yeah. his powers. It's not like. You piss. He, he felt bad about because the memory of her is what stopped him. Because what happens is he lifts up, his, he, he uses his mind, he lifts everybody up because he could like rip people from inside Pretty out. Pretty much he explodes, I guess. Yeah. What happens? And, so it just destroys everything in like a 20 by 20 vicinity. Yeah. And he, the memory actually stops right there. But Bruce Willis continued the memory of his mother, or who he thinks is his mother, who's his real mother's sister, it's kind of confusing, uh, stops. Bruce Willis continues to make headway towards the kid. So Joseph Gordon Levin says this is just gonna rinse and repeat, and you know the kid he's he's gonna obviously head down a bad trail. He already has these anger problems. No, with Bruce these Willis powers. kills him though. <laughs> yeah, that's why so, I want. Bruce Willis should have just went, shot that bitch in the head, went over, stomped on the kid, blew his head off, and <laughs> called it a day, and then fucking gets sent back to the future and lives the best fucking life that he fucking deserves because he's Bruce Willis. <laughs> well, what happens is he turns the gun on himself, and Joseph Gordon Levin turns the gun on himself and kills himself to stop Bruce Willis. And it ends on this note that the kid w- is going to go down a better path because his mom didn't die. Mm-hmm. They're given a second chance. And all the money that Joseph Gordon Lovett had, he had with him, and he leaves it. That the- fucking Bruce Willis got for him. <laughs> Let me repeat that again. Bruce Willis got all this all fucking his other money. money too. All his money. Too. No, yeah, but Bruce Willis got all this money for his fucking past self. And it just feels like his past self just constantly shits on his future <laughs> self. So keep that in mind, people. Your future self is going to be the nicest guy in the fucking world. And you better respect that if he ever comes back in time. <laughs> I see what you're saying. No, I, I, I understand like what Ryan Johnson was going for, the director and writer of the film. In this movie, I understand that ending. It's more than anything. It's not like I don't understand it. I can see where it is. I just think it's just Bruce Willis does all this shit just to get shit on. Like well, He kills a kid, too. A totally innocent kid. Well, you know, that's, that's what happens. <laughs> it just life. fucking happens. Sometimes you just got to go into a garden, pull out a six shot, blow a fucking kid's head off, and walk away. It just kind of happens that way sometimes. Well, I mean, how's he going to know, though, really? Yeah, I know. I understand that. But it's one of those things. I, I think it's one of those things they did to, like, the thing is, so you wouldn't he's feel not, he's not, bad he, for him. He's not doing it just for himself. Mm-hmm. If he kills the Rainmaker, it's going to save the future. That's what, kind of what it's going for. Yeah, I get that. I get and it's just one of those ones, like, that was the only thing that kind of bothered me. It's just one of those ones. I understand what Ryan Johnson was doing. It's just like, oh, yeah, we got that emotional, like, life comes in continual ways. Because that's the thing. It's a Ryan Johnson movie, so you know it's going to have some feely stuff in it. And Like, Ryan Johnson, he has feelings. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, he, he, is a, he, he likes to have that. And he always says that he's a fantastic character developer for a lot of guys in movies like Brick. But um, it was just like that one thing. It's just like, the whole story of Bruce Willis going through all this trouble, just, it's almost one of those kind of endings where it's almost, it's equivalent to being one of those things where it's like, it's just a fucking dream, almost, for Bruce Willis when it gets down to it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's really what it is. His entire life is nothing now, because Joseph Gordon loves a dick and killed himself. I guess it doesn't bother me. I sort of see what Plus, you mean. I guess, I, I guess I didn't like the Emily Blunt character the whole time. I thought she was kind of obnoxious. I know she, that's supposed to be her character is because she's been kind of pushed around, so now she's kind of a dick. And the kid, I didn't really care for either. I thought he was kind of a little bitch. Well, anytime we go in a movie and there's a kid on the screen, you're like, fuck. It's like, fuck I come that to the kid. Movie, I come to movies to get away from kids, even though one of my day jobs is watching them at a, at a, at a, at a pool. <laughs> it's like, it's a rated R movie. There's not supposed to be children in here. Where's my Grand Theft Auto environment? <laughs> so that doesn't sound nearly as gay. Spencer, during summers, works as a lifeguard. But, um, so... That's what kind of just like drove me up the wall. It's just that thing right there. I mean, it, didn't I, it didn't drove me up the wall much. It's like I, I probably if, if I watched the movie the second time and I understood what the ending already was. Uh-huh. I, I mean, like I still like it a lot. I'm not. It, I mean, as well as movies, it, it could have been like an amazing movie and it just got pulled back a little bit by that. I just think that Bruce Willis. I think there could have been a found a better like a medium almost in that too, where like everybody you didn't get totally wins. screwed over. Yeah, mm-hmm. just because like. 
I don't know, just all that work put into it just to not get anything mm-hmm. just kind of sucks. That's how I kind of feel, you know what I mean? No, I understand. Well, it's the tragedy of it. I guess it's tragedy, but fuck that kid. Who's the <laughs> fucking kid ruined the world? Well, they're trying to show that any, I think what they're openly trying to show is anybody can just. Depending get, on their past, yeah, I know they can do can that. Can get out, sit on the right track. But. Well, it's just one of those ones, just, I don't know. For a man that works fucking hard his entire life to not get what he deserves. Keep in mind, he was, he was like fucking hookers and like shooting up the whole time. Yeah, but he changed though. That's the thing yeah. though. He learned to the error of his ways. Not completely, because he kills a kid. But that's part, of save, that's part of the save in the future. I know he didn't know which one it was going to be. I understand that, but it's, it's, you know, that, whole, it's that whole moral thing, you know? Well, yeah, that's, it's like that kind of, like, thing, like, kill one person to save a million, you know? Like, yeah. that thing, like, could you do it? Mm-hmm. Of course, Bruce Willis said, fuck it, I can do it. <laughs> and that's one of those ones well, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about the uh, the Rainmaker kid. I'm talking about the other kid, but yeah. Oh, well, yeah, but somebody was that Rainmaker kid. I mean, like, yeah. how are you going to know? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's like a military. Casualties are bound to happen. I understand happen, that. Like, no, war. I understand. I understand both sides of it. Mm-hmm. I do. I guess I'm just being one of those undecisive bastards alive right now. Because I can go either way. Yeah. I can just understand what this movie was trying to say and what it was trying no, to I, do. No, I understand and what it's, it's ultimately doing. a tragedy. It's not my movie, so I understand. It, it's ultimately a tragedy, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was something I've never really seen before. I really enjoyed yeah. it, but it just had that kind of that... The ending was just the one thing it didn't feel like for the for the for the movie feeling as fresh as it was all the way through. That ending just kind of had had like the uh, what was that movie we saw a couple of years ago? Um, Repo Man Repo had Man. like that kind of ending to it, where it just kind of like the ending just felt kind of tacked on. Felt like it was just kind of like, yep, all that shit that he went through, fucking lie. That, that, no, that's a little different. I think no, it's, it's not Repo the same. Man. I'm not. I'm not saying yeah. it's identical, but it's in that same category. It's the same as fucking Super Mario Brothers 2 when you realize it was all a fucking dream. That's pretty much what it was. Excluding the fact that he's dead. It's like if Mario just never woke up, too. If Mario just took the fire flower, pointed at himself, and shot himself. You know? and right at the very end of the game. <laughs> That's really what it is. And I mean, like, don't get me wrong. The movie's still really good, and I liked it a lot. There actually were no fire flowers in Mario 2. My bad, but you get the point. All right, yeah, that's okay. Well, it's a dream, so he, yeah, he, there isn't this when dream. He wake, but when he wakes up, he does that. <laughs> yeah, okay, there we go. Just wakes up says, like I can't, he, li- I can't live with a dream that good. He like he just turns over like Peach is at the other side of the bed. Like, what is it, Mario? This shit just isn't worth it. Just reaches in. Luigi's the- at the other side of the bed. Yes, we're not as rich as you would think. <laughs> <laughs> My brother still lives here. We all share the same bed. We make toads at the foot of the bed. <laughs> He's like the fucking dog. <laughs> like we kick him in the head every once in a while, make him stop fucking get barking. off. <laughs> a plumber's fucking minimum wage job, man. Come the fuck on. But um, yeah. Other than that, though, it's it's a really amazing movie. I don't know. I just felt there could have been just a better way to go about that. I I mean, I understand it. It it almost comes across a little like artsy right there with that kind of ending, like kind of like. It, it, it comes across as people that don't think, like, normally realistically. They think mm-hmm. sort of realistically, like, man, if we just do things like this, the whole world would be perfect, man. Just gotta save one person. I bet that's what, like, Ryan Johnson said in the pitch to this movie. <laughs> <laughs> listen, man. Listen, Joseph Gordon love it, right? <laughs> he has to kill himself. But himself is Bruce Willis. <sighs> but it's like the Terminator. Or I have some guy like, so it's like the Terminator. No, man, it's not the fucking Terminator. <laughs> It's different. It's Looper. Yeah. It's, it's all looped. Whoa, that's what we'll call it. Looper. Looper, man. I've oh. never seen an interview with Ryan Johnson. I, I don't I've know. never have either. I don't, I don't know. even know if there's special features on any of the movies he had. If there, if there is, and I haven't watched them, I feel kind of bad. I just bought Brick for $3. I gotta watch that. Yeah, you gotta watch that movie, because that one's really cool. And that one's a great movie where, like, the characters in it are, like, fantastic. Because mm-hmm. Ryan Johnson's great at making characters. When you watch that one, you'll be like... It has that kind of thing that, like, Looper had where, like, they were just... The way that they're designed, you really put some effort into it so they don't kind of feel just like like what a lot of movies feel like. It's like, white guy, generic. Black guy, he talks funny. You know, <laughs> Asian guy, of course he does martial arts and has broken English. You know, kind of like... <laughs> and he's good at math, yeah. You know, like, what a lot of, like, kind of movies, kind of especially some of the action movies fall on that, too, sadly enough. Mm-hmm. But... Other than that, though, that was pretty cool. Actually, I want, there's a couple things I want to talk about. I like the guns in the movie a lot. The guns? They have the, the, the Blunderbuster. Yeah. Which, the Blunderbuster's really coming back in style, because like, I've known about that for a long time, but like I've just know, I've been seeing it recently in a lot more things. Mm-hmm. Like I, this, Here's three things that I've seen in it. It was in Looper, it was in Pawn Stars, and it was in Red Dead uh, Redemption um, Undead Nightmare. Mm-hmm. 
And it's just like, to me, that's three three things is already enough that's like, it has a comeback. Yeah. And that's kind of cool because that's a pretty badass gun. I just think it's kind of cool that they, they, they actually a have like a, a, a sci fi version yeah. of it. Plus, I also like the way that the revolvers are kind of a little bit like. They look like kind of like Blade Runner guns, sort of. Yeah, right? and they're kind of like. They're revolvers, but they're sci fi. But that's kind of the cool thing is the, the two main guns people use are like blunderbusters and revolvers. Yeah, like it's a couple machine guns. It had a little guns. bit of a Western vibe to it. Not completely, but a, a dash of a Western yeah, vibe. Yeah, it had a dash of a Western. And it even mentions that, like, kind of in there, too. Well, I mean, aside the fact is the. the the kid blue character he's always playing with his gun he talks in like he a... really reminds me of revolver ocelot and metal gear solid 3 only not badass yeah well because remember in, in, in metal gear solid 3 that's kind of where he was kind of learning his badassness yeah but he at least survived <laughs> yeah he was like this guy was like a little bit more of a more like he was a wannabe revolver ocelot. well they even got the part there's a part where uh what was the actor's name jeff daniels yeah jeff it? daniels jeff daniels was his name okay there's the part where he's all like, I just want to make you happy, Abe. I just want to do good. He's like, give me your hand. Please, not my hand. Give me your hand. And he just like slams a fucking hammer on his hand. And Jeff Daniels is fantastic at it. It's like the, pretty much the mob boss who was sent back in time to be the main leader of the loopers. I just thought, because he, he wasn't, even though he was like threatening as hell, he was still like. He's just, very calm and collective. And some of the things he'd say, like he's all like. You kids and your fucking styles. See how cool he is. Joseph Gordon loved it earlier on in the movie. He's like, where are you going after this? Uh, I think in France. No, you want to go to China. No, I'm going to France. I'm from the fucking future. You want to go to China. Trust me. Yeah, I just get like he was just kind of like direct and suave, but also kind of like gruff. Mm -hmm. I don't know. He, his acting is just fantastic. Once again, the characters are amazing in this one. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's about all I got to say about that. I guess segue into something I know we both have strong feelings toward. And next one is the drunk bear. <laughs> just so used to saying it. I'm just so used to saying drunk bear. I mean, uh, recently on Tuesday, uh, The Dark Knight Returns Part 1 it's came out a... on DVD and Blu-ray. It was actually kind of a funny story to find that. It was almost like a quest to find that movie, in our town at least. Well, because, the f okay, apparently Avengers is so fucking big that nobody gives a fuck about Batman. Yeah. That was pretty much what I learned about on, tu on Tuesday. That was what I learned. Everyone had to make space for Avengers on their DVD rack. Unless, you know, Vin Diesel robbed, you know, the, the, the semi-truck carrying it, like in Fast and the Furious, <laughs> yeah, on the way there. The, the new fucking thing, Fast and Furious 6, we're stealing a bunch of uh, Dark Knight Returns. <laughs> were they stealing, like, DVDs and stereos in the first one or something like that? Like, DVD yeah, players and stereos? Were, yeah. I don't think they were stealing DVDs. I think they were stealing, players. Like, like, yeah, like, electronics. Yeah. Well, anyway, because I went to, I remember just, like, I got in my classroom. I'm just, like, I'm just... I'm just going to go buy Dark Knight Returns. I, I got to watch it so we can do a podcast on it. It'll be awesome. I get there. And just Avengers shit everywhere. Now, keep in mind, don't judge. Uh, we got All we got in this town to buy movies at is a Walmart and a Blockbuster. That's all we got. So, uh, first place I go is Walmart. I feel a little bit of myself die as I walk Sometimes in. Sometimes you just got to suck the devil's dick. You got to just get on your knees and just go at that devil's dick like no other if you want some Batman, you know? Yeah. So the Batman will heal a little bit. But, you know. So go in. I see the slot for it, but it's not there. There's a fuck ton of Avengers, but I mean, don't get me wrong. I liked Avengers, but not as not much as good as, as Batman. Not as good as Batman or this Batman movie for that matter. And I go there. I'm just like, fuck. I'm looking around. I'm looking around. I'm like, okay, maybe you haven't put on the racks yet. You keep in mind it's fucking twelve o'clock. It's noon, but. <laughs> Maybe you just haven't got around to put on the racks yet. So then I go over to like one of the guy, one of the people working there. I'm like, "Hey, do you guys got Batman: The Dark Knight Returns?" He's like, "Uh, no. You're thinking Batman: The Dark. You're thinking Dark Knight Rises, and the first one is Dark. The the second one's Dark Knight." I'm like, "No, no, no. I'm talking about Dark Knight Returns. No, let me no, show you." you. Fucking then dumbass. he takes me around the corner. Just we got it right there for seven fifty. It's like. No, dude. I you almost want to just take the guy in the corner, slap him a couple times across the face, and be like, no, you listen up. And you listen good. For me, it's one of those things. I'm not usually one of those people, but it's like, I know my fucking Batman. I'm one of the last people you need to lecture to about Batman. I'm seriously one of the last fucking people in the world. Well, one thing that drives me up the wall is this, and it comes from corporations most of the time, because you never get it from small businesses. At least I never noticed it from mom-and-pop chain. Or mom-and-pop stores, not mm -hmm. chains, but... um. Is I hate when stores lecture to you. Yeah. Like GameStop used to do it. They kind of cut that out recently in the last like six months. They realized they were about a year. Business. They stopped doing it. But people lecturing you at stores is the worst thing ever. That's where I want to stop going there and find a new store. That's why I probably I buy from the internet nowadays. Yeah. Because <laughs> I was in there. I was just, the guy's like, 
So we got right there. I'm like, no, Dark Knight Returns. And he's uh, it's, it's Batman, Dark Knight Returns. And he's all like, no, once again, that's Rises, and that doesn't come out until this. I'm like, it's an animated movie. You have a slot over there for it. He's like, oh, let me go check. Do you guys have any in the back? He's like, for some reason, we don't have that in. It's like, Tuesday. I mean, I'm not going to try and complain for, I mean, for all I know, you know, like, the semi-truck got, like, robbed by Vin Diesel, but... Or Tony Soprano. Or somebody to got it. <laughs> or, like, you know, Robert De Niro from Goodfellas. So, so Somebody got that truck. We just don't know who. <laughs> yeah, regardless, not the, it's, it wasn't the end of the world. I ended up getting it the next day. But it was just one of those things. Like, what the fuck? What, what was that? You know, it's just one of the... I don't know. And then Blockbuster was fucking stupid enough to not even know yeah, that it was even coming in. in. No, I went in there. As soon as I went to the register, the lady's like, do you want a copy of Avengers? Fuck off. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want I want to know if you guys have like Dark Knight Returns. It's an animated movie. It's like, is it under family children? No. <laughs> and, like, uh, you don't see a tear up the corner, slap her up a side a couple <laughs> times. Listen here now and listen good. I was no, I'm not gonna do that. I just want to get and get the fuck out of there. And then, and then you're like, uh, well, we don't even have it on our things. We don't even have it ordered. It's not even coming in. Maybe it's just our blockbuster. I don't know. But you're like, we're not even like, are you fucking serious? So it's like Jesus. But. It's not the end of the world. I end up getting it the next day. It's just one of those things. It seems weird that so many corporations, so many just being two, I guess. Yeah. Just because I know this ain't like you know this ain't like Dark Knight Rises, but still, it's still from a major. It's still from a major corporation going you know for the major iconic character that everyone knows. Yeah. It, well, it's just one of the ones like I I don't know. I I think that what happened is I think that they had it at least at Walmart. They had it sitting back there. But nobody decided to unpack it because they were too busy unpacking the fucking Avengers movies. <laughs> just some guy just sitting there. Hey, want to unpack that Dark? We have we got Dark Knight right Returns. Yeah, we can probably put it out there and sell it, make some money. We could. We, we got to haul these like two thousand Avenger DVDs out there. Yeah, we could. I mean, we the. There, there's only, there's not very many of us doing a whole lot right now. I mean, literally, there's like just four people just kind of hanging it's out. It's Walmart. The they, they, they hire ten people per area because we <laughs> all know we're a bunch of dumb fucks. <laughs> we actually got two good friends who work at Walmart. Hey, but, yeah. hey, I didn't tell them to work there. <laughs> but no, but anyway, you get the point, though. So, But on the movie itself, uh, really good movie. It's probably one of, I got to watch it again, but it's. Probably one of the best DC Universe animated movies. No, if not it, the it, best. It's, it's up one there of with um, Under the Red Hood and Superman All Star. Mm -hmm. Or All Star Superman. I always want to say it the other way around. I know what you mean. Yeah, but no. The the here's the big thing. Here's the. It, let's get the big complaint. Uh, out well, of let's way. just okay. Movie's awesome. Now let's bitch about the two couple things we have to bitch about. <laughs> then we'll talk about how awesome it is. Yeah. The biggest bitch at all is you see if you've ever read Dark Knight Returns, what makes it so iconic is. Frank Miller's um, ongoing monologue, his voiceover that is consistently Batman's. going on Batman's head. And it happens with a few other characters here and there, mm -hmm. but pre predominantly happens with Like Batman. Jim Gordon has a lot of it too in there. Jim Gordon has it, and uh, I want to say Kerry Kelly has yeah, it. Yeah, like, Kerry has it too. Yeah. But generally it's, and even Joker here and there. Mm -hmm. I, I think, actually, actually, when I think about it, a lot of the characters have it. But you, but we're on Batman 80% of the time, so it's, mm -hmm. you, so you, 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 we always you, think of Batman. And some of the greatest lines in comic history are in these monologues, or in this, and you don't, they, they take it out. I mean, there are moments where they'll find a way to get the line in there through, like, actual dialogue, actual dialogue, but yeah, but overall, though, they don't, they don't, they, they take it out, which is one of those things, why? Well, the thing is, that's what, that's what Frank Miller excels at, is that, like, noirness. Mm -hmm. You know, he made a fucking entire series off of those inner monologues called Sin City. <laughs> Which mean, are amazing. Yeah, and th 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 I mean, that's what he excels at. And that it, it just kind of seems strange, because Year One has it. Yeah, it does. And those DC Universe movies, they, they, they mostly never try to play them safe. They mostly try to do it like, this is what the comic book was, let's not change it, let's do exactly how it was. So it seems kind of weird to me to actually take that out, since that's such a big thing almost, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, there are lines they manage to still get in there. Like they just don't, they don't have it in the monologue. Like there's the line um, when like, because usually if you haven't read the comic book, usually during the action, uh, Bruce has an internal monologue going on throughout, like as he's punching fuckers in the face. And one of the lines is when he, when he's going, when he's going, this, this is, I guess the halfway point of the book, the end of this movie, because it's only part one. 
he's going up against. Actually, no, this is no, this is actually not even at the halfway point. Well, I guess the halfway point of the movie, not the book. But he's going against them, and he has the. He says the mutants. The mutants, yeah. He's going against them, and he has, and he says, uh, ro- like Dick called it the Batmobile, something a kid would say. And he would often like refer to like, oh, Dick, I really wish you were here. Uh, you were always my little monkey wrench, Dick. He'd always just say these things, talking to Robin, who's no longer with him. Well, yeah, he had that whole. It was a really cool monologue. He was driving the tank, and it was like it was almost like he was talking to Robin, but Robin wasn't there. But he's more reminiscing on like Mm -hmm. the days of Robin. He really misses, you know, having Dick around. But they really don't get like in there. It's just he's just driving. And but they get it later on with one line, one like not even a line, like a tidbit. Yeah, they kind of fit in there. Like, because, like, Carrie Kelly's like, what do you call this thing? That's, for those of you who don't know, Carrie Kelly is the girl Robin in the book. She says, like, what do you call this thing? Dick called it the Batmobile. Something a kid would say. Mm-hmm. So, and they also get, other like, rooms for other, I mean, the, the, the all the big lines he says out loud are in there. But it's just a lot of the ones in his head. Like, I, lo- I love the line. It's, uh, I don't, I'm not gonna remember, I don't got it word for word. But there's the part where he interrogates a mutant, and he says, uh, it's not easy. You just, it's like a couple of panels, just black. And he's like, hey, man, what do you, where am I? Says, you're you're going to talk. I know I'm going to talk. Just let me know. He's like, and you hear the monologue over it. It's not easy carrying 280 pounds of sociopath up 80 stories. Then he moves his hand. He, the guy sees how high he's hanging up. He starts screaming. But the screams make it all worthwhile. It's like, oh, my God, that is so fucking hard. That is just such a great piece of dialogue. There's so many others like it. That aren't in the movie for whatever reason. Yeah, I just, I just it's one of those, I just can't. I, I don't know where they made the decision like to cut those out. Like I don't know why. That's the more. If you never read the book, I guess you'd say what's the big fucking deal. But if you if you're a fan of the comic books, you you read this comic and this is like almost kind of like, I guess the if you if Batman's your religion, I guess it's like the Bible almost. Yeah. And it seems like or one, it's at least one of them. At least one of them. It's not my personal favorite, but it's yeah. up there with my top five. Yeah, it's one of the ones I like a lot. And it's just. Of all the things to take out, why would you take out the the, the the monologue? But whatever, we've we've kind of beat that to death. All that being said, this is still a fucking awesome movie. Oh, yeah, no, no. I mean, like, that doesn't ruin it, like, a whole lot. It's just more like, there's a couple times you just kind of go, like... It, uh, the, the other one I'm really missing is the one where he's in the race car in the very beginning, too. This would be a good death. Yeah. Not good enough. But not good enough. And that's, like, they just they really define Batman. The thing about it, though, is, like... Just in Batman comic books in general, that mm-hmm. inner monologues, it's not just a Frank Miller thing. It's in there all It's the in time. like a lot of other stories, too. Mm-hmm. So that to me, just taking that thing out just seems like it's not like... If it was only in that Frank Miller ones, I could see maybe they go like, well, that might be a feel out of place. But it's in every other Batman comic, another Mankind, too, pretty much. Yeah. So just taking it out is just kind of... In that line, this would be a good death, but not good enough. That happens throughout the uh throughout the whole dark it's almost like series. The, like like really like uh, i don't know what you'd call it like the tagline of the dark knight mm-hmm. series which i do like the tagline they did give it for the movie heroes never die they just get darker mm-hmm. but um other than that though the only other complaint i had is that they made jim gordon not smoke in this one and it's this well one's like it's since it's in the 80s like they should have just left the smoking in there just for the fact to keep it more similar to the comic. And it's not like, I mean, come on. It's not like he's doing cocaine or like, you know, I mean, or something like that. He's smoking cigars. I, I think that's just the Motion Picture Association of America just being a bunch of fuckwads. I know. I it, It's either that, because I know nowadays they really crack down hard on smoking. Because people, nowadays people look at smoking worse than violence. Smoking mm-hmm. is considered worse than violence. Which I guess, the way that I understand that is that um, a kid is... You know, way more likely to smoke a cigarette or a cigar than put on a bat costume and go start punching people. No, 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 no. <laughs> then, then, go, then actually kill somebody. You know, the chance yeah. of somebody killing somebody is, you know, pretty far out there. You know what I mean? It's, in general, an average person's not going to kill anybody. But smoking a cigarette, they're pretty damn likely to. I mean, I'd probably say at least one out of three kids is for sure going to smoke a cigarette. Yeah. But here's the thing, though: a fucking movie's not going to make him do that. And well, I take that back. I I, I had a Clint fr- Eastwood makes it look really fucking cool. I had a friend cool. that said he likes smoking cigars because Solid Snake smokes them in Metal Gear Solid Three. So <laughs> I guess we can't rule that one out too much. But uh, so at one point you were suggesting when we first started podcasting, maybe we should just start smoking cigarettes. So we come in, it's like, welcome to the Old Man Orange Podcast. You so sound rugged as fuck. <laughs> yeah, because we both hate the sound of our own voices. Well, yeah, I always thought smoking would work well for singing too, because you get a more raspier voice. Get the Eddie better going. But um, the Chris Cornell. And the only thing that bothered me too is because he's chewing this gum, 
But the gum is like in those packs that you get nowadays where you pop them out. Like, I don't Ooh. remember those packs as a kid. Granted, it, I wasn't oh. alive in 86, but I see what you mean, but, though. No, they, they, they never had packs where you popped them out. Mm -hmm. So that was the only thing, though, is like the little plastic ones that mostly, like, you, you get, like, the whitening, like, orbits in and stuff. That kind of bothered me just a bit. More, mostly, I guess, when it comes to period pieces, the one item in there that doesn't look like it comes from that period, that kind of, like... My thing with that, the reason I guess I can let that slide is I trust DC Universe enough, DC Universe Movie Company enough to... I don't think that was a creative decision. I really think that was one of those things they uh, they had the, the Motion Picture Association of America was really jumping on them. Like, well, you got a lot of violence. You got uh, not loads of swearing, but notable amount of swearing. You got uh, the mutant leader eating the mayor in a yeah. scene. So it's one of those things I think they well, just... One, and plus the anime movie, it's Batman. It's something they know kids will watch. Yeah, I, I think that's one of the main reasons they took it out was for kids. But here's the other thing is um this is actually even in the regular comic book is throughout the story it mentions that Jim Gordon like his wife's trying to give him to eat a little bit healthier and stuff like that so I guess they thought that like it's like in a sense in a nowadays view and this is the thing is like if yeah if it was modern it, it wouldn't bother me nearly mm -hmm. as much is that obviously he's trying to eat better he's probably gonna stop smoking too right yeah so I think that's actually more what they're trying to go with is just it's just more of an all-around package, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, the other one is more like... I think he even mentions it in The Dark Knight Returns, the comic book, that he doesn't smoke in front of his wife, though. Yeah. But you think that she'd come home and you'd smell a cigar all over him? It's like, well, where you have you say, been? Being the shit out of people that smoke cigarettes. Oh, okay! <laughs> no, I actually... The movie, though, itself, it's it sounds like we fucking hate it. It's not the case with over. We love this We don't movie. really hate it. We just say we... Well, it sounds like, you know, we're like... There's, there's We're no smoking. About one part, there's, there's no fucking smoking, and they don't show the Joker smoking either. Which I feel like you like. Come on, like the Joker can smoke. He's bad. <laughs> Jim Gordon, I can understand a little bit more. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They actually chopped out some of the Joker. There's there's certain things out of the book they took out, but I can understand what why. Well, I understand because like when you make a when you make an animated one, you got to make it pretty much the most important scenes. Uh huh. Which I can see him saving some of the Joker scenes were in books one and two for the. For the movie and just for the second, second movie part. and bringing them in, yeah, no, but the movie it's um for those of you who've never read the book, it's generally what it's about. We'll just give you the simple synopsis. Uh, Batman goes in. Uh, he's come. It, it's a period piece. It takes place in the eighties. It came out in eighty six, and it was involved. It was like one of the first. I think it was one of the first Batman books at the time to actually involve like politics that were currently going on mm -hmm. in the Cold War, Reagan, all that, and actually stopped and just said, okay. Uh, what would Batman say if he was here today? And out of that, Batman, he's forced out of retirement. I believe he's like somewhere in his like like late to mid fifties. Eventually, he and then he he just forced to being just back into the action and just trying to like get back in shape. And it's almost kind of like what Dark Knight Rises was loosely based off of. Not so much. That was more off off a of Nightfall and. Uh, which we'll call it no man's land but okay here's the other point i want to bring up really quickly is that and when i was rereading the comic book the dark knight returns again in um it's 1986 you say right that it came 1986 out 1986 and 1985 let's take a look really quick flip in there and tell me what the date is on that really late because there's a line that i when i was reading it again i noticed because he's mentioning like what happened to jason you know 1986 yeah well, Jason, like, now, like, I don't know if, like, Frank Miller was, like, either given, like, future advice, a fucking looper came back and told him this, <laughs> or something, but, like, he's mentioning in there, Batman, he's mentioning, like, after what happened to Jason, no more, no more, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But the death, in, the death in the family came out in 1988, which fucking blows my mind. I think it's one of those things, maybe he was saying, maybe he's, like, almost playing a lot of fans, because a lot of people hated Jason Todd, so maybe it was that, and at the same time, it's it's a future story. It's not part of the actual timeline. It's not part of the continuum. So they're like, all right, uh, uh, Jason Todd's dead. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I guess people just said, let's actually kill Jason Todd. Yeah. <laughs> Frank Miller had it right, you know. His looper that. came back in time and told him. <laughs> yeah. He also should have told him not to direct uh the spirit, but you know. apparently the that the old version of him thought that movie was great, so. <laughs> But um, no, I, that that line always just kind of was like, one of those ones like, how do you fucking know? 
he's Frank Miller. Or he's Frank like, you know, Frank Miller had it was he's ahead of the curve. Just take his advice on this one. <laughs> but uh, no, the, the, and the animation in this one is just fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I think is really cool is because like everything's pretty well designed and stuff. But I love how they keep Batman pretty fucking simplistic. Like it, it just like it just has the lines he needs. Like on like his face is just like like two little V's. Yeah. <laughs> they make up the side of his face and then just a couple lines. It's just like, he's drawn really simple, but everything else around him is kind of like very like, you know, well, like, I guess drawn, a little bit well animated. Um, like everybody looks a little bit kind of realistic, but Batman just has this brute like gorilla look. Kind of like he does in the comic book, but like, he, he just looks like a straight fucking beast in this yeah. movie, man. Well, he, you know, he really just looks like Beast from X-Men almost. <laughs> but, he beat the fuck out of Beast from X-Men, this Batman right here. Oh sure. yeah. Well, I just love is like he puts his hand like on Carrie's. It's just like it's fucking bigger than both her hands combined. <laughs> Robin comes with us to the Batcave. Yeah, I think that was his line. Oh no, Robin comes with us too. Something like that. But no. Yeah. Anyway, but no, that move that movie is just so awesome. Another thing it brings that the that the comic brought in was, I believe that the '80s. That's when they started victimizing a lot of like criminals. And they bring that in. They bring along how people always try to, you know, sometimes bad is bad and people just can't face that. The comic book actually brought that in because you got a lot of people saying, Batman's taking away the civil rights of individuals in our society. And because he's going around just because there's like these mutant kids that are just like, they're called the mutants. They're not literally mutants. They look like skinheads. They look like glasses. a mutant the leader. Yeah, they look like skinheads with Devo glasses is what they ultimately look like. Mm-hmm. And just like very like vi- bright, vibrant colors. And they just start, uh, just, they're kind of like, you know what they kind of remind me of? I don't remember what they're called, but the the uh, bad guys in the original Assault on Precinct 13. They just cause oh, death yeah. and destruction for the sake of no death fucking and destruction. Reason, yeah. yeah, and that's what they're ultimately like. They're very simple-minded, and they're very stupid. They have their own type of slang, which you thought it sounded retarded in the book. Wait till you hear it actually spoken. You know, I will have to say, in the movie, it didn't sound actually that bad. I mean, well, it's one of those things. I mean, like, like I know it's kind of weird slang, but it, it came across smooth in the movie. When you read it in the book, it always felt, felt kind of weird. Well, I'm not saying kind of like Frank Miller doesn't know how to write. I mean, it's it's meant to. These clearly aren't the most intelligent group of people. They're not meant to be likable. It's just kind of like you know they had Rob and Don just be like, like she my kind of nasty. Oh, she shivy. Oh, she Billy Berserk. You know, just like what the fuck's going on. It's funny because like if they really were coming across as coming across a bunch of white kids, they're trying to be black. That's how a lot of them talk when they actually do talk in their slang. Mm-hmm. But, like, almost, like, not understanding really what – like, almost, like, a, a couple of white kids that watched, like, three, like, MTV specials. And, and like, that was all they ever got. Like, Maybe the, super fly. Like, the taste of, like, they're, like, black, I guess. And so they try to piece together these words these black people say, but they couldn't really remember them perfectly. So they kind of made up these own, like, new words in the process. That's what it kind of sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's – uh. Regardless, I'm not giving Frank Miller shit because I mean it's it's meant to sound weird. It's meant to sound stupid. They're not meant to be likable characters by any means. But I just thought um, it came out smooth in the actual the animation though. Mm-hmm. Like the way they talked in there actually didn't sound because it, it sounds kind of funny when you read it. When you read, it sounds well, kind of dorky actually, sort of. Well, but when, when you, it came out, like when you heard it, it was like, well, that's actually not too bad. Well, the thing I, is, I, I can I believe it, that. Well, my thing is when I read when I read it, it was almost kind of harder to. This is gonna make me sound kind of dumb, but it was almost kind of hard. I had to almost reread it a few times. Because there wasn't uh, inflection, there wasn't pacing. Mm-hmm. You're just reading at your own pace. So sometimes, like, what was he trying to say? But when they added that pacing inflection in his tone, you can understand, oh, okay. Yeah, because yeah, it better. came across just smoother. Mm-hmm. One thing I, or what are you going to say? I, I was done. You got excited. But um, one thing I will say, and this is, the, this is the main thing that always bothered me in the book, was all the news stories. And I think I mentioned this before, but the news stories was the, always my biggest problem in the book just i'm because, there with you yeah yeah just because i don't know what it happened it kind of it one it broke up the pacing and a lot of it wasn't like relevant i mean some of it was relevant but some of it was just kind of like shit on other topics and i know it's going off that thing in the 80s that everybody's like drawing the tv like fucking flies you know so that's what it's supposed to be about but in the animated movie the tv stuff is smooth and it actually comes out perfect and they tie it in really nicely to what's going on it doesn't just feel like it was slapped in there well, a lot of the times, like the TV would have, they would have like the news reports and all that happen with the action. As he was fighting somebody, they would have the news reports going on the side, yeah. which was almost distracting. This, they only say what you, they need to say. They don't be overhead. But there's one scene where it's there's a lot and a lot of TV, but that's the point where Batman is at his breaking point and he just. Well, it's like yeah, it's a perfect like they put it in perfect locations there, and it's like yeah, they cut out like all the kind of like, a little bit unnecessary stuff. 
And then it's also tied into parts where, like, people are actually watching TV or stuff. Mm-hmm. It doesn't just feel like it just pops up there, like, randomly. Because mm-hmm. that's the only downfall I always say of that book is there's just too much TV stuff in there. And I think that might be one of those ones, like, yeah, in the 80s, I know that, like, TV was, like, fucking God. Yeah. But um, <laughs> still, I'm, I'm glad that, like, it was able to be fixed. Which I really thought, like, when I, before that movie came out, I was like, the, the TV's going to look fine in there. It just doesn't look – it doesn't fit right in the comic, mm-hmm. I just don't think. The second one, I'm curious. I'm, ho- I'm, I'm thinking they will. They I don't, I don't, I don't see the DC Universe guys pussing out. But uh, I think, I think Reagan will be in the second one. No, well, hopefully, Cause... yeah, hopefully, don't push out on anything in the second one because the second one's really like the better part. Yeah, it is. like the beginning was like, fan- it's really good. It's a great like beginning and build, but the second one's just where like it gets really cool and mm-hmm. where shit really gets down. Well, you get to see Batman fight Superman. You kills joker finally which means if they get rid of the monologue we're gonna miss one of the best lines that's in um the dark dark knight returns which is after he kills joker which usually like, batman killed but this is alternate reality well technically so what happens okay. is batman paralyzes joker and joker finishes himself off oh, okay that's how it happens in the comic you gotta read that one because because what happens is like because he jams he, the, he jams the bait the bat the battering in his eye or something like that for a second doesn't he? he you know, he paralyzes him and then Joker just goes like he's like you know you're paralyzed and Joker just or he was able to move his hands up and go cook, cook, and finishes himself off. Oh right, it's it's in there. I'll pull it up. You keep talking. Well, I've, I'll be honest. It's been it's been probably like I kind of forgot about that part. I just thought oh yeah he killed he killed Joker but maybe not. All right now I feel kind of like a dumbass but well, <laughs> there I've, is a scene where he kills the one mutant chick. Who has a gun at the kid's head and they actually and then, the, then he's like i'll kill him i'll kill him he's like i believe you then he shoots her and they but... switched it around the animation because that's actually in the first part and that was mm-hmm. the only thing is like the way that it, it went in the book i liked a lot more because that was just one of those ones where batman just realized it's either that kid fucking dies or this lady dies i have to make a decision and he actually does it mm-hmm. you know and he so he shoots her which I guess if he shoots it with that gun, he's pretty much just shooting it with a fucking spear gun. <laughs> but um, save the kid. So, but I uh, like that. And in this one though, he what's he do? In the animation, does he throw a battering? He hand? like shoots her in the hand, then he like oh yeah, bashes her in the face with the butt of the gun. That's right. But in that one, he actually killed her. So I guess by that point in the Joker, I guess like oh, it's not too out of it's not too out of character for him to actually kill somebody by now. But yeah, we're but no, that part though. That we're gonna miss like one of the best lines from that, where he's just like after, because then Joker just sets himself on fire. Yeah. And then he says like, "I bid him one final goodbye." This is inner monologue, and he spits in his face. Which means we're not gonna get that line, "I bid him one final goodbye," unless he says it out loud, which will seem kind of awkward. Mm-hmm. Okay. But aside from that, though, I mean, all around, I mean, we we won't know until that comes out, which we gotta wait like what six months. Yeah, it's going to be... I For some reason, I was thinking it was coming out in January, but I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. That's what I was guessing. I feel when I look at the book, it makes me not want to talk. <laughs> These pictures say better things than I ever could. No, it's like, I want to say the Joker snaps his own neck. Did he snap his neck? Weird, yeah. <laughs> we are turning into the pockets. Listen to us read a book. He spits. He spits. And then, because I remember that, because I, because I remember, because that's how, that's how I remember it before. It's like, oh yeah, Batman kills Joker. That was like the whole, that was kind of like one of the biggest things about this book. And then I was all like, no, Batman gets very close, and Joker finishes himself off. Oh, okay. it's okay. I got away from it. <laughs> if I off my dirt's off my hands. But, but anyway, anyway, check out the movie if you haven't. It's great. If you haven't read the book, read the book too. Read the book too. I recommend reading it kind of like, well, you can either do it one or two ways. You can just watch the videos first, and then go back and read the book, or read the book and then watch the videos. Mm-hmm. Personally, I'm not one of those people you th- that says you need to do one the other way or whatever. I'll be honest; I actually like the the book more. That's probably not a big shocker, but the, I think the, I think the movie does trim it down to the bare essentials of what you need. Mm-hmm. But the stuff, some of the stuff they do take out, like the mo- like the internal monologue, I really miss that. So. Yeah, the way I look at it is the animation is one of those ones; it doesn't replace. Mm-hmm. It's not like some of the other DC ones that are actually pretty much like, well, fuck, you almost don't even need to really read the book anymore. It's practically mm-hmm. captured everything there is in it, and it does it in an animated form. You don't have to read anymore. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But, uh, under, um, uh, go ahead. Or, I was going to say, but in this one, though, what this one does is, uh, and I drop like now. Well, you see what you're going to say. I lost my train of thought. 
Well, every once in a while, the DC Universe movies, they would either do one of two things. They would condense it, or they would keep the bare-bones concept and change it around. Which, one of my favorites, I mean, this might replace it, but my favorite for a while was Under the Red Hood. Which, I'll be honest, the book, not a bad book. It's a good book. But the movie is so much better, I think, because uh-huh. they condense it down to the bare-bones. I wish and the Red, pacing's better. I wish Black Skull or Black Mask. <laughs> I just can't think. I can't help but think Red Skull whenever I look at the new Black Mask. No, yeah. Um. Whenever I look at Black but Black Mask, I wish Black Mask wasn't as much of a puss as he as he was in, in the movie. But overall, I thought that movie was really well done. They made more sense out of a lot of things. They just trimmed it down to bare essentials, and that's like a that's almost like a perfect bat. That's a perfect Batman movie, just about. No, I really think I personally actually think that Under the Red Hood is the best Batman movie ever made. I don't mm-hmm. think that they've made something better than that. Who knows? The Dark Knight uh, Returns Part Two might yeah, be the see. old timer, but that one right there, I just think is the best. Mm-hmm. But uh, what I was gonna say though is um the, the the Dark Knight Returns animated series doesn't replace the book, but it's a cool way to look at it. Still, mm-hmm. it's like one of those ones like you should no matter what read the book. Because that's where you get the real like insight, and you get kind of you get the inner monologue, which is like the best part, and then you get some other kind of stuff to it. Mm-hmm. But the movie is still pretty damn cool. Yeah, so there you go, awesome book, awesome movie. Looper's pretty good. Check that out when you get a chance too. So, oh, do we ever want to mention any of the trailers we saw really quickly? Uh, Abraham Lincoln trailer, the one new one. No, the one that I actually this is the one I want that Red Dawn. Red Dawn, talk about that. Because uh. I've never seen the original. I know you go to movie hell for not seeing that. No, you've never seen you've never seen like anything on this show. <laughs> the fuck have you been watching? <laughs> well, the original Red Dawn is really awesome movie with Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen in it, and that chick from Dirty Dancing. But um, pretty much what it is in the old ones is just you know if you haven't seen it, you're missing out. I see the look. Yeah, the guilty but, um, look. Just these kids in like uh, high school, um, or let's just say the Cubans invade, which is part of a Soviet invasion, really, mm-hmm. into this small Colorado town. Colorado and um the kids run up to like the mountains and hide up there and literally fight the Soviet invasion off from pretty much guerrilla warfare mm-hmm. and so this new one is pretty much same concept but of Koreans now so I agree with you. Koreans I don't know how else you pronounce Koreans 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 yeah. Koreans Koreans I don't know I, I, it's the way I, I just heard it weird I just heard like Koreans like that or whatever northern Koreans he had a <laughs> Fuck some shit up. We got the good old boy from the Thor coming in to save the day. Which now, I, I, like, it, I think he's not supposed to be actually a high school. I think he's supposed to be older than in there. The yeah, they, uh, he's, they said he's a U.S. Marine. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, if they're trying to make him a high schooler now, it's like, I'm no way I'm going to believe that. Which What's... the guy who's supposed to be a high schooler, he looks like he's 35. I don't know. The guy's supposed to be Charlie Sheen. Yeah. But, um, I don't know. It's one of those ones, like, I really like, I, that, that didn't mention if it's radar or not, did it? It just now the original one's not radar, but it's one of those movies like if you watched it, you would think it's a radar movie though. I'm guessing it's gonna be a PG-13. I know just I, the I, way it looked. I'm guessing it's gonna be a PG-13 because one, the original one wasn't rated R, and two, I feel like they're gonna kind of go of a more like family friendly environment. Plus, it's coming out Thanksgiving, so yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, the original one you watch it and it actually feels like a radar movie. But it's not. I mean, mm-hmm. it's not extraordinarily violent, but it doesn't come... You don't think any way of it. It doesn't feel like it's been dumbed down to be a PG-13 movie. Or a PG movie. They changed the rating of PG-13 later on. Okay. But um, it still looks kind of cool, though. I, I definitely want to go see it. Uh, I really like the original one a lot, because it's a fantastic movie. I'll have to borrow the original from you. Yeah, you're missing out once again. We just have to have a movie marathon, so you can see yeah. all the movies you haven't seen yet. You make it like I've never seen a movie before. <laughs> There's like... <laughs> Three movies we happen to mention on this that I haven't seen. They're all like ground. Well, at least you saw Roadhouse finally. I I own Roadhouse. Yeah. Now. Now, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, like for the last like ten years, you've been missing out like no other. Well, you saw. I got it now, and I saw it. It's okay. Roadhouse. All right. It's okay. Ro- We're just gonna make a list for you. And you're just gonna. Check I guess them primarily off. Patrick Swayze films, but yeah. Yeah, Patrick Swayze films of the eighties. Oh, all right. I guess that's what we got. What are the big ones? Uh, Roadhouse, which I have and own, saw, and loved. And uh, Dirty Dancing. Red I've Dawn. seen Dirty Dancing. You seen, yeah, but you haven't seen, you haven't seen Dirty Dancing. I've seen Dirty Dancing. Yeah. No. Who the fuck hasn't seen Dirty Dancing? Well, I don't know. That reminds me of a movie you probably haven't seen for some reason. <laughs> I've seen that. It doesn't really. Jonah. Charles Xavier dances. Charles Xavier. Isn't Patrick Stewart in that movie? Not that I remember. 
I thought he was in that movie. Wasn't he like one of the dance? He was like, wasn't he like one of the dance instructors in that? He is in that movie. He's in the wheelchair. I thought for a part of it. I don't know if he's in the wheelchair. I think you're thinking of X Men. <laughs> I, I think just... you just saw X Men. <laughs> <laughs> And Patrick Swayze had claws that came out. <laughs> oh, the only other trailer I thought was really cool that, like, I no, I did see their dance. Everything we right, saw was the, the new Matrix movie, which is not a Matrix movie, but that's what I just call it. It's Cloud Atlas. That one looks good. Yeah, that one looks pretty cool. By the Wachowski brother and sister and the Run Lola Run people, mm-hmm. whoever they are. Yeah, exactly. Something actually, we've been kind of procrastinating on. Uh, do we want to answer emails this time? We don't have any emails to answer. I thought we got a couple of email questions about like. Just things we were working on. Or no, not. we just got weird ones that involve Robin. It's already on the table. Why don't we just throw it out there? <laughs> Shit. Why does... I'm when, curious to when know. When it comes down to Batman, it's always about me. I actually don't even know if I have him anymore. Uh... Nope. It's like, always about you and your, like... I don't have them on there. They're pretty much like, how did you come up with the Robin voice? I don't remember, really. I just thought that Robin... I think originally because we kind of had the thing like, well, we made Batman really gruff and made Robin really like feminine almost. Well, originally we had, before we did the animated ones, before we even did the live action ones, we we were trying to do like a robot chicken thing. We we tried to do stop motion animation with action figures. Like, this is too much About fucking five work. Minutes into that. <laughs> we we're like, let's just have our hands out of frame. Then we were like doing it with action figures and we took them off just because they're so bad. But originally Batman was just kind of like. Batman was the same as he is in the animated show and in the live action stuff we do. But Robin was like, boy, golly, I want to help Batman out. He's my best friend. And he starts off that way in the live action one. But as it goes on, he becomes more like, oh, fuck it. What's the point? It's and- like he starts out chipper and fun. But then he like we realize that like it's kind of hard to write a lot of comedy around a character who's chipper and fun all the time. So let's just make him bitter and hateful, but he still hangs around for some reason. And he still has that voice. But he still has that voice. And that's where he just kind of drove him to on that. All right. Do we have another question involving Robin? Um, I don't know. Something about your legs, I'm sure. Probably. I think that's what one of them was. Where'd you get that sexy green speed at? Big five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that was actually one of our viewers that always had a thing for your legs, apparently. But yeah, but yeah, Batman. So she has a question that doesn't involve Robin. Or any any question you got for us, throw it out here. If it ain't too fucking weird, yeah. we'll answer it. But yeah, yeah, just feel free to ask just about anything. Pretty much. Okay, well that seems like it's about it. Check out those two movies. They're fantastic. And really, you gotta wait. I don't think there's anything else DC Universe coming out till the next no, Batman. No, there's a there's a preview for uh, Dark Knight Returns Part Two, and there is a rumor. Granted, this is Wikipedia, so it's not 100 percent factual. Well, I mean, like there wasn't anything yeah. on the DVD that I previewed it, because most of those DVDs just always have a preview for the they next. They just one. have a preview just for Part Two. Yeah. Uh, there's a rumor. There's there, there's two rumors. There's a rumor that the Dark Knight Returns will be their last one, which will be very unfortunate. I don't know if that's true. I hope not. I hope not, because these movies are, like, a fantastic. There's a rumor that they might do The Killing Joke, which would be sick. There's a rumor they might do uh, Flashpoint, which is an awesome story. That would be a really cool one. Which I, I really want to see one that centers on Flash, because Flash is one of my favorite superheroes, and I think we're at the point where you can almost... I mean, he's not, like, huge in the public eye, but I think, you know... He's at the point where he could have his own DC Universe movie. Uh, and there's... Uh, I think that was it. I think the, those are only two I remember. The Killing Joke and Flashpoint. Yeah, so, I've, heard, I've heard kind of rumors on those two, but... We'll see what happens. But uh, till then, I'm Spencer Scott Holmes. I'm Ryan Dunnigan. And we will see you later. Thanks for listening.